Hi friends, this is Aishwarya from Freshersworld.com. Welcome to our YouTube channel on Jobs and Careers. Today, we are going to look on the type 4 of the train problems. In the previous video, we dealt about the three types of train problems that you may face in any aptitude exam. Type 4 is the last of its kind. So type 4 is nothing but the theory of relativity. So there are two types of theory of relativity. One is train moving in opposite direction and then train moving in the same direction. So let's say, let's just explain for the opposite direction. Let's say this is train 1 and this is train 2. Let's take the length of the train 1 is L1 and length of the train 2 is L2. This is moving at a speed of u1 and this is moving at a speed of v1. So we know the formula is speed is equal to distance by time. So what is the time taken for the two trains moving in opposite direction to cross each other completely? So in this case, what we say is that when this part of the train and this part of the train cross each other, that's when we say that two trains have crossed each other completely. So always it has to cover length 1 as well as the length 2 to cover the distance. So L1 plus L2. So what about the speed? So a lot of questions, we know that it will always be plus U1 plus V1. So but a lot of people don't know why it is like that. Let's say we are going in a train. When you see the opposite train, even though it's going in a speed much lesser than you, but you always feel that it is going in a higher speed than you. Let's take you are going in a train which is at a speed of 60 kilometers per hour. Let the opposite train go at 20 kilometers per hour. But still you feel that it's going in a much faster speed. So how do you feel that? That's because the addition of the speed of your train as well as that train is considered. So 60 plus 20, you feel that it is moving at 80 kilometers per hour. And that's why you always feel that it is moving in a much faster speed than in the train that you are sitting. So u1 plus v1, this is the reason we are using u1 plus v1 here for the opposite direction. Let's go for the same direction. Same direction, parallel, all these things, you will be using the same formula. Let's take this is a train and this is another train. Of length L1, length L2, moving at a speed of U1 and V1. So we know the formula, we minus the speed here, but why? Because let's say you are going in a train and you are seeing another train in the same direction of yours. If you are going in 40 kilometers per hour and that train is also going in 40 kilometers per hour, you feel that both our train is not moving. You get confused at that time. That's because 40 minus 40 it becomes zero and you, f you have the feel that you're actually not moving with that train. So that is the reason we put a negative here. So speed is equal to distance by time. So the time taken for the parallel trains to cross each other is L1 plus L2 divided by U1 minus V1. Now you would have understand the formula behind the opposite direction of train crossing each other and the same direction of train crossing each other. Let's solve some problems. So the problem number one in theory of relativity is two trains 100 meters long and 200 meters long travels at a speed of 60 kilometers per hour and 30 kilometers per hour respectively in the opposite direction on a parallel track. So what is the time to cross each other? As usual, write the given data. So what is the length of train 1? 100 meters. What is the length of train 2? 200 meters. So what is the speed of train 1? Is 60 kilometers per hour and speed of train 2 is 30 kilometers per hour. As you can see in the question, they move in the opposite direction. People get confused with the parallel tracks. Parallel tracks means they are going on the parallel tracks, but they are coming in the opposite direction. So we take the opposite direction here. So if it is opposite direction, we know that we have to add the speed. So S1 plus S2, which is nothing but 60 plus 30, 90 kilometers per hour. So the catch here is, as you can see, the length is in meters and the speed is in kilometers. As usual, we need to convert it. 90 into 5 by 18.
25 meters per second. So we know the speed now. So we know the length. So let's find the time. So as they are moving in opposite direction, we know the formula. L1 plus L2 is the distance divided by the speed. So length is 100 plus 200, which is nothing but 300, divided by 25 seconds. So when you solve 300 by 25, you will get the time taken to cross each other. This is the answer for the question. Let's go to the next question. So the next question is, two trains of equal length are running on a parallel line in the same direction with a speed of 40 km per hour and 30 km per hour. The faster train actually passes a slower train in 30 seconds. So find the length of the train. So what is the given data in this question? They have given the speed of the two trains is 40 km and 30 km and they are moving in the same direction. We know if it's the same direction, we have to subtract it. So speed here is 40 minus 30, which is nothing but 10 km per hour. So it's in kilometers per hour, but here you can find the data in seconds. So we have to convert it into meter per second. So 10 into 5 by 18, which is nothing but 50 by 18 seconds. Let's just have this. So another data they have given us, faster train passes a slower train in 30 seconds. So time taken to cover is 30 seconds. So in the second part, we know that the time taken is 30 seconds. The important catch here is the equal length of the train. So you know that for the two trains to cross each other in the same direction, it has to be L1 plus L2. We know that L1 is equal to L2 here. So distance by time, which is L1 plus L2 by T, we know both are same now. So which is equal to 2L1 by T. So we know the speed 50 by 18 to L1, we have to find it out. Seconds is 30. So once you simplify it, you will find the length of the train. Sometimes to confuse you, they will ask what is the length of the faster train? What is the length of the slower train? But as we know it's of equal length, whatever be the type of the train, the length is always going to be the same. So this is the fourth type in the train problems. In the previous video, we already covered three types of train problems and this is the fourth one, which is the theory of relativity. If you are thorough with all these four types of problems, there's nothing more that they can ask in any train problems in any aptitude exams. So if you are a person who's looking for a job, kindly register in our freshersworld.com website. We are coming up with a lot of interesting aptitude sessions. So kindly like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.